Hi, I'm Bill Burks, and I'm here to talk to you today about our state partnership program with the Kingdom of Tonga. Uh, Tonga is one of those countries that was actually never occupied or possessed by another power, whether it be the Western world or Europe in general. And it was the only one that was like that. And so they take a great deal of pride in the fact that they are one of the few kingdoms left in the world. And, you know, fortunately, after we got the partnership, I was able to attend with a handful of our other folks uh, the coronation for the, the king that's there today. Now, what you'll find when you go to Tonga is it's a, it's a typical South Pacific island. It is not Hawaii. It is not um, any of the other classic, you know, beautiful sand beaches or anything like that. But what you're going to find is probably the friendliest people in the world that you'll ever have a chance to meet and interact with. And like all the islands in the uh, area called Oceania, uh, they all have similar problems. Uh, you know, natural disasters, whether it's by tsunamis or um, wave action. Some of the islands out there are, are looking at, with global warming, to actually just go away in, to to in totality. And so when you look at it, they have natural disasters, they have drug trafficking, illegal and unreported fishing out there that's unregulated by any uh, you know, kingdom. And Tonga is about the same size as Nevada. And what we do have in common with them is, you know, we're about 110,000 square miles of territory. They're about 100,000 square miles of territory. Our two metro major metropolitan areas are separated by vast distances of desert. Their two major metropolitan areas are, you know, separated by vast quantities of water called the ocean. And, but when you look at it, I, you know, I happened to be there last uh, February when Cyclone Guido went through, and that was a pretty bad cyclone. It was a Category 4. And what I saw is a people that were more resilient than I've ever seen, especially in this country. The next day, everybody was helping everybody else out. They were picking up uh, all the debris that was blocking the roads. The military was out, just like we would be for a natural disaster, uh, moving tree limbs, cutting trees out of the roads, making so commerce could happen again. Um, and yet, when you look at it, this is a people that you know, by and large, when you look at their number one import, it's remittances from this country. And so they have probably a, almost a largest population here in the United States as they do in their kingdom. And part of that is, is because when young people are growing up, they have an outstanding education system. There's a school literally everywhere on, that, on the islands there. And they have a pretty good university system too. But when they get to a certain level, there's not a lot of what you would call quality jobs for the younger people to get to. However, what they do is they go to New Zealand, they go to Australia, they come to the United States. Uh, when you look at it, the two largest populations of um, people from Tonga is California's number one and Utah's number three. And New York, I believe, is number two or number three, but that's where the embassy for their country is, is it's actually in New York City, not Washington, D.C. And so you sit there and say, well, why Nevada? Well, we're number six with the most Tongans in the population, both here in the greater Reno Sparks area and also down in Las Vegas. And so we have a natural tie with them just on the things that we do. I think you're going to find that if you get to go over there, it's going to be a very rewarding uh, time. Um, one thing I found over there, and unfortunately I suffer from it, is there's no such thing as a bad piece of food over there. It's all fantastic. Um, and uh, ironically, they have probably three of the greatest Italian restaurants I've ever been to anywhere in the world. And you, I think you're just going to have a great time helping the Tongans out and what you can learn from them is as important as what we can teach them because they have an awful lot to give and that's one of the reasons why we've invited them to be part of our Best Warrior competition this year and in years to come and I think they're going to surprise a lot of people when they come over here to see how good they are. The only thing we'll have an advantage is, is the high altitude might have a little bit of an impact on them but uh, they're very very physically fit um, I would go to war with them in a heartbeat uh, and not worry about a thing. 
So as you go forward, you know, take time, realize that you're in a foreign country. So all those co common conveniences that you're used to, you probably won't find there, even if, like, even if you de have already deployed to the Middle East. Tonga is Tonga, um, and it is a great country if you enjoy it for what it is. Thank you. The Nevada National Guard State Partnership Program staff began building a strong relationship with Tonga's military and civilian officials in 2014. The State Partnership Program, or SPP, is a United States Department of Defense program managed by the National Guard Bureau that links National Guard states and territories with partner countries around the world to support cooperative security, military, and civilian objectives of geographic combatant commands. The State Partnership Program has been successfully building bilateral relationships for more than two decades, and it now features 73 unique security partnerships. The SBP links a unique component of the Department of Defense, a state's National Guard, with the armed forces or equivalent of a partner country in a cooperative, mutually beneficial relationship. Under the auspice of the SPP, the National Guard conducts military-to-military -military engagements to support security goals while simultaneously building relationships and capabilities that encompass military, government, economic, and social arenas. Via the SPP, Nevada Guard soldiers and airmen are able to share their expertise with foreign officials while increasing their own knowledge by learning about other countries processes, customs, and perspectives. Tonga's history has been well documented for more than 3,000 years. Today's Tongan society retains traces of influence from its ancient Polynesian heritage, early Pacific explorers and settlers, and later Christian influences of 17th century Europeans. As a result, Tonga features a mixture of two prominent cultures, Pacific and European, which are evident in the country's modern society. Another key historical influence, the country's monarchical system, which continues to be a dominant influence on the social structure and is the basis for a hierarchical system. Tonga is known as the Friendly Islands. The term Friendly Islands was coined by Captain James Cook, who visited the island in 1773. The tribal elders wanted to kill Cook, but couldn't agree on which method. Unbeknownst to Cook was the fact he arrived during the Inasi festival, the yearly donation of the first ripe fruit to the gods. Anthropologists consider Tonga, Samoa, and Fiji the cradle of the Polynesian culture and civilization. Tonga is a constitutional monarchy and is the only country in Oceania that has never experienced a break in its indigenous governance. That fact is a great source of pride amongst Tongans and they have extreme confidence in their monarchical government. Public education is free and mandatory for children up to the age of 14. There's a normal fee for secondary education, and there are foreign-funded scholarships for post-secondary education. Tonga enjoys a 98% literacy rate. Tongan culture has a long and varied history. As a multicultural island nation rich in history, it has traditions stemming from Melanesian, Polynesian, and the British Empire. The most noticeable Western influence on the Tongan lifestyle is Christianity, which caused a dramatic cultural shift during the 19th century and moved society away from a predominantly matriarchal society toward a patriarchal one. With this 19th century shift serving as a rough dividing point, Tongan history is divided into a pre- and post-Western society contact period. However, throughout both of these periods, royalty and chiefly genealogical connections were valued and formed the basis of a social rank system. This rank system involved differing expectations for employment, land use, marriage, and included the application of different linguistic conventions. Post-contact Tonga removed some of this structure linking commoners to the traditional obligations to chiefs and established a patriarchal system of land inheritance. While the class system continues to exist within Tongan society, consisting of the commoners, nobles and the monarchy, 
the influence is less than during pre-contact Tonga. In pre-colonial Tonga, the position of chief was originally an inherited position. In contemporary Tongan society, however, chiefs may also be selected by the monarch or crown prince through seniority of descent and political dominance. Along with Christian influence, Tongan culture is affected by the neighboring countries of Fiji and Samoa. This effect includes artistic traditions, myths, and storytelling. Sunday is a holy day, and it's considered inappropriate to work or trade on that day. Migration and technology is affecting Tongan culture, but there is a current emphasis on preserving the nation's heritage. Tongan traditions have migrated internationally along with immigrating Tongans. Rank and status in Tonga is established at birth and does not change. The basic unit of Tongan society is the extended family group. This unit usually consists of a senior couple and their unmarried and married children. Tongan families also adopt a collective approach with respect to wealth, possessions, and local issues. Children are reared and raised by the whole family, not just their parents. The idea of childless families and orphan children is extremely uncommon, with many children going into the care of extended family members when needed. Titles are given at birth, and once a title is bestowed, a male will only be recognized by that title. However, he can be stripped of the title if found guilty of a serious crime. Tonga is a hierarchical society with a hereditary three-tier class system or rank structure. Although the rank structure is not as rigid and elaborate as it once was prior to European contact, it is still adhered to by ethnic Tongans. Accordingly, members of the royal family and nobles are treated cordially and with respect. The Tongan class system consists of a royal family, members of the royal family hold the highest rank with their own separate dialect, b nobles, hereditary nobles include 33 families who have their own dialect and hold the main political, economic, and military leadership positions, and c commoners. Commoners are classified as the lowest class in the Tongan class system. The monarch and noble families make up a privileged class at the top of Tongan society. Everyone else is a commoner, and although they may hold positions within government, they are unable to enter the nobility even through marriage. This class system also impacts land ownership across Tonga, as the crown owns all the land. Land is passed to the nobles, who are then obligated to care for the welfare of the commoners who live on that land. Violent crime is on the rise and often associated with Tongans who were raised overseas and deported back to Tonga. Tongan prisons are being reconstructed now to include bars, fences, and walls. There's a social stigma associated with time spent in prison. 90% of Tongans are considered obese by health officials. Although there's differing opinions about height and weight standards in Oceania, a large body is revered in most South Pacific cultures. His Majesty's Armed Forces mission is to maintain public order, patrol coastal waters and fishing zones, and engage in civic action and national deployment projects. Components of the armed forces include the land force, the Tongan Royal Guards, Navy, training, and support. Tonga is located about 6,000 miles from Nevada. The usual air route when traveling to Tonga is Nevada, to San Francisco, or Los Angeles, to Fiji, to Tonga's Fuamato International Airport. Fuamato International Airport is both a civilian and military airport located 12 kilometers from Nuku'alofa and serves both domestic and international flights. The chain link fence surrounding the airfield has been upgraded to the RW11-29 as well as an emergency response center and the International Asphalt Hardship. The domestic and military hangar are located southeast of the International Airport. Both in rural and metropolitan Tonga, dinner is the lone meal of the day that includes the entire family at one sitting. Normally food is consumed throughout the day. The basic staple of foods are root crops such as taro, accompanied by fried or roasted meat or fish. Taro leaves are often mixed with tropical fruits including bananas, pineapples, and mangoes. The ritual of kava drinking is common at both formal and daily events. 
Cover is prepared by grinding dried roots and mixing the powder with water in a ceremonial bowl. Kava, a non-alcoholic drink made from the ground roots of a native pepper plant, is often consumed during formal ceremonies. A kava circle is a gathering to settle issues of possible conflict, but kava is also often enjoyed in a social setting. Formal attire for men includes a dubenu skirt and a taovala mat, worn around the waist and kept in place by a belt of coconut fiber. Prestigious old belts made of human hair are also used. A shirt with a tie and a jacket complete the attire. Women wear long dresses and taovala as well. The softness, color and decorations of a taovala reflect status and wealth. People shake hands when they meet and everyone greets by pressing their cheeks to their faces. The men who prepare the umu or roasted meat for a big feast do not eat with the guests and are allowed at the table only when the first round of diners have finished dining and departed. Most food is eaten with the hands, although silverware is also commonplace. It is customary to wash one's hands at the beginning and end of a meal. Miscellaneous facts. The electrical standard is the New Zealand plug. Most tapestries, wood products from Tonga are restricted from export. Formal ceremonial occasions are frequent in Tonga. Almost all of these events are marked with a formal exchange. Even when not expected, gifts are always welcome. Be prepared to receive a gift. It is fine to exchange gifts but keep the recipient in mind when choosing a gift and keep all gifts appropriate. Gifts should be conservative and small. Good ideas include unit coins, chocolate, and books. The United States government has a status of forces agreement within the Kingdom of Tonga. It was signed and placed into effect July 20th, 1992. It is a responsibility of the senior member on a state partnership exchange to understand that it is the responsibility of American personnel to respect the laws of Tonga and to abstain from any activity inconsistent with the spirit of the agreement. Per the SOFA, U.S. government personnel on travel orders are not required to have passports or visas to enter Tonga. Government personnel may wear uniforms while performing official duties. Tongan authorities accept a U.S. driver's license. Note that Tongan drivers proceed on the left side of the road and the steering wheel is on the right side of vehicles. Alcohol is legal in Tonga and the legal drinking age is 18. Driving under the influence of alcohol is a serious crime in Tonga with a low DUI limit of 250 micrograms slash liter or .008. This low number is the equivalent of just one alcoholic beverage. Make sure that you are current on your hepatitis B, hepatitis A, and typhoid immunizations before you travel. Contaminated food and water can cause travelers diarrhea and other diseases. Reduce your risk of disease by sticking to mainstream food from well-known sources and bottled water. Eat food that is fully cooked and served hot. Ensure eggs have been thoroughly boiled and fruits and vegetables have been rinsed in clean water. Stick with pasteurized dairy products. Don't eat food served at room temperature, food from street vendors, or raw or soft cooked runny eggs. Don't eat raw or undercooked rare meat or fish, unwashed or unpeeled raw fruits and vegetables, or unpasteurized dairy products. Avoid bush meat horses, bats, or other wild game. So after the last several minutes you've been uh, indoctrinated into um, the Kingdom of Tonga, um, you might want to expand your knowledge uh, once you get there uh, by going to the various bookstores they have there, go to the various restaurants, sample the cuisine, and meet the people. 
I think uh, you're not going to be disappointed, but re do remember that you're in a foreign country and you're ambassador for the, not only the United States, but also the state of Nevada. And I can only tell you this, if you don't have a great time, it's your fault. So thank you very much and enjoy your time over there.